Now, today's guest, she's a trailblazer in the world of business and at 23 was the youngest person ever to run a football club. When told she'd have to be twice as good as any man to survive, she said, well, that's not difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly a loose woman in the making. And in 1999, oh she God. helped launch our Launched. very first episode today. She's back discussing important yes, issues affecting women everywhere. Taxi, Please welcome Baroness Karen Brady. Thank you. Thank you. Can I just say, <laughs> That clip we've just seen was last century. <laughs> We're so old now, <laughs> last Jane. Last <laughs> century. Unbelievable. Oh, oh, 1999. Oh, a different lifetime ago, isn't it? It <laughs> is to see that. Oh. A lot has happened since then, Karen. <clears throat> um, we know you, you've got so many high-powered jobs and roles over the years. You know better than anyone how tough it is for women to navigate their way through yep. the workplace. Um, that's that's anyway, never mind having babies, then childcare and all of everything that comes with that. Then, of course, we're talking menopause. And you feel very passionately about what we have to do within the workplace to make it a better workplace, to keep our women in work, and for also our men in the workplace to understand it better too. That's right. I mean, I work with a company called Simply Business and I love working with them because they're a real champion of small business owners. Um, and they work with over 900,000 business owners and 900 of those they surveyed were women of the menopause age that run a business. And the results they found were staggering. 10% um, of women running a business said their business lost money while they were going through the menopause. Um, and a quarter, sorry, a quarter said they lost money and 10% said they had to close their business altogether um, because the symptoms, the difficulties getting people to understand it, the expressions of sympathy and understanding about what you're going through just wasn't there for them. So this really highlights the fact that as women, we need allies, we need empathy, we need understanding, we need people to know what we're going through so they can expect different things from us during the different stages of our life. And it's really important that we educate people, uh, particularly our male colleagues, so they become our allies, they understand what we're doing, and then we can bring our whole self to work. We can be the person that we are going through, mm. whatever we're going through, and people understand that um, you know we're going to have different emotions because our hormones are changing and that can sometimes make us a difference. Yeah, and of course, two yeah. of the main yeah. symptoms are insomnia, which I know you, you had as well, I had it, yeah. which of course makes yeah. you tired, uh, and anxiety, greater anxiety. Yeah. So, of course, those two things in the workplace can make everything just seem so much more inflated, can't it? Yeah, I mean, I had... It sort of crept up on me quite slowly, and I started with the night sweats, which... Uh, is horrific. You wake up and you are literally drenched mm. and you get out of bed and you can't get back into bed because the bed... And then you're up. Yeah. Um, and then you start finding, for some reason, your patience is getting thinner and you're a bit more angry. Us, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you get a little bit more angry and then lots of things, you know, bother you that didn't How did bother you, you know before? that was menopause, though? Because that's... I'm looking and I'm thinking, that sounds like me. No! <laughs> <laughs> How did you know when because it was the perimenopause or the menopause? I, I think it's a combination of things. And then you get that sort of, you're in a bit of a slump. Right. Um, my nan would say, oh, she's got the blues. You know, it's that sort of, you can't really be bothered to do anything. Yeah. And it's when those things start to accumulate that you begin to realise that actually you're going through the menopause. Yeah. And it was Davina McCall who said to me, you're going through the menopause, get on the HRT. Yeah. Uh, and of course I did, and it completely yeah. reversed my symptoms. I mean, it doesn't work for everybody, but it worked really well for me. And do you, are you, do you sort of advocate, because we talked about it a lot on, on the show, you know, a lot of people sort of say, well, women should be given time off um, for menopause. Uh, and I'm sort of a bit against that because I think, you know, it's hard enough for women in the workplace to add something else where we're going, oh, you know, I, I need some time off. Do you advocate that or...? I don't think women want time off. No. We don't want time off work yeah. to go and sit at home and sweat. Yeah, <laughs> we, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we just want people to understand. Exactly. We're going through this very natural change in our mm. body yeah. um, and we need sympathy and understanding of what that is. Yeah. What do you think when you're talking about how similar it is to some of the stuff that I work with young women wanting to advocate for themselves with their disabilities and how they need to go into their workplaces and feel that they have that 
they can have the confidence to ask for what they need, have workplace accommodations to meet their needs so they can be themselves in that place. It's sort of, how are you empowering? What, what message would you give then to women who feel that they don't have allyship, that they do need to learn how to advocate? Well, I think what's really important, the great thing, I always say there's a small place in hell for women that don't help other women. Yes. Um, and I think in a workplace, okay. if you can gather together like-minded colleagues, if you can talk about the issues, you create this network of support mm. that helps you through the difficulties that you're experiencing. Yeah. I'm very lucky. I mean, 50% of my senior management team at director level at West Ham are women. And we were the first Premier League club that got menopause-friendly accreditation. Right. And we did it because a large part of our workforce are going through the yeah. menopause. Yeah, yeah. And we wanted to educate other people on the things we were going through. So building networks is about finding like-minded people that are interested in the same things you're interested in. And all women will go through the menopause at some point in their life. It is That is a natural thing that happens. And if we can show people how it works, how to prepare for it, what to expect, what's available to you, what symptoms you might be, yeah. and create some sympathy and understanding, it makes everyone's life so much better. Mm. And isn't it right, though, with that, men in the workplace need to understand? I mean, mm. how do we get the message across to men? Because, of course, a lot of women work in male-dominated environments in sort of their workplace. And, of course, they've got to understand what the women ask for. And it's just those conversations, isn't it? Those awkward conversations. What do you think is the best way to approach that for I women in business in particular? Uh, look, I find in, in my workplace that, you know, we're a... At a football club, we don't make anything, we don't manufacture anything. Mm. All of our assets are people. So working in an organisation where people are the most important part of everything we do, mm. those people are genuinely interested in other people. And part of being the in the menopause accreditation is that everybody goes on training. So you understand. You, you're not, as a, as a man, you're not going to go through the menopause, but you understand what your colleagues mm -hmm. are going through. Yeah. You know what to look yeah. out for. If someone's a bit tired or a bit short or not feeling as much energy as yeah. you expect from them, you understand, oh, I understand what that is, uh, and I know what to look at. And it won't just help them in business, it will help them at home as well. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> My husband always says to me, oh, you yeah, haven't taken your HRT this morning, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, how dare yes, you? Yes, I have, actually. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. This is the real me, he said. <laughs> He's always like, oh, you've forgotten your HRT, haven't you? <laughs> um, very exciting couple of months ahead for you. Kind of next year, you're going to be a grandmother. Oh, oh. Which oh. I'm so excited. You really? Really are. Your lovely daughter is going to have a little baby. How, how, how has that brought you all sort of together and looking ahead to sort of, I know just Christmas will be an exciting time, yes. waiting for it all to happen and then a brand new year. Yes. Baby. Well, I tell you what's incredible. When your baby is having a baby, mm. it's <laughs> just an incredible feeling. I mean, Sophia is such a kind-spirited, wonderful person. She's going to be make her fabulous mother. She's so happy and so excited um, that we're all so excited for her. So I think she's going to have a battle on her hands because her grandparents are alive, her parents are all alive, uh, and the same on her, her husband's side. Uh -huh. So I think there's going to be a big fight <laughs> over who's going who's gonna to have the baby, the babysitting. Lots of babysitting. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> lots of babysitting. <laughs> lots of people wanting to reach out and help. So she's really, really lucky. She's got a great support network, great friends, great family. And you were very close to your excited. grandma, weren't you? I was indeed, yeah. yes. A grandma's... Um, should be and can be a really important influence oh, yeah. because they've done everything in yeah. their life yeah, and they yeah. only want the best for you. They're the kind of person that when you say, does my bum look big in this, they say yes. yes. Uh, <laughs> and they say it because they love you and they have never any side to it. So grandmothers can be a knowledge of, of wisdom and help yeah. and influence, but never taking over the, the, the day to day no. um, and, and never wanting to. Quick so, one, nan but, or gran, grandma, gran, what are you going to be called? I Very don't know. One. I no, don't not care. Sure yet. I don't, I'm not really fussed. Okay. <laughs> I think my my mum is nanny, so I don't oh. think I'll be nanny. nanny. And grandma seems a bit formal, doesn't it? Yeah. So I don't know what happens. Not sure yet. <laughs> Good old grand. Glam, 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 grand. Glam, yeah. Glam, yeah. Glam, <laughs> nanny, <laughs> Linda. Uh, nanny Linda. Karen, it's wonderful as always to see you. Thank you oh, so much. Love Karen love Brady. To see you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.